Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today we're going to channel Heath Ledger in the afterlife. All right, so I don't know a ton about Heath Ledger. I know that he was in the Batman movie. I know that he was dating one of the actresses, I think, from Fuller Ho or Full House. One of the twins, like Michelle, I can't think, Mary Kate or Ashley Olsen. That's it. I know that he was dating, I think, one of them at one point. That's all I know. I know he died young and tragically. I'm not sure if he committed suicide or if it was a drug overdose. I'm not sure. So we'll find out. Let's have a chat with him. Oh, and he really looks, yeah, he shows up with like black makeup around his eyes. Were you like a, were you a villain on the Batman movie? I was thinking you were actually Batman, but you might not have been Batman. You look like you might have been one of the villains. Were you Joker? He looks like he might have been Joker because he shows me green and black. He says, I was a very, a, very much a character actor. I really got into my roles, the roles that I had. And he's showing me like a method, method actor, is that right? Method actor. He says, I was really serious about my work and I had a lot of opportunity. He's showing me living in New York and then in LA. And he says, um, New York is more business, real, real, a lot of pressure there. There's a lot of um, intensity. He says a lot of intensity there in New York City. He says, LA is a lot more relaxed, but he says, you're surrounded by beautiful people and you really have to look good in order to be cast, even if you're, even if you're playing a role, uh, if you have a very specific character or a method uh, or a, um, as an actor, it, it seemed as though you really had to be beautiful, one of the beautiful people. And I didn't consider myself, he's saying, I'm not, I didn't consider myself that. I wasn't like a pretty, pretty boy type. And uh, he says, you might consider me, he said, Bridget, you might consider me a little reckless that I made some choices that were not, um, or impulsive, impulsive, probably. A little James, James Dean, a little bit like, just a titch. With, like he's showing me fast cars driving really fast. And so I don't know if he's trying to show that as a metaphor, you guys, like if he's feeling that way, or if that's literal, if he was driving fast cars. He's showing me... Um, like movie stunts too, where he wanted to do his own stunts. And there's some a lot of danger to that. And he says the insurance companies and the filming companies don't really appreciate it when you do that because it can, and your agent about has a heart attack because you can't really um, guarantee your safety when you do that. And you show me big tall buildings and um, almost like a Mission Impossible vibe he's showing me. I don't know if he's referring to how Tom Cruise did some of his own stunts or what the deal was, but he's trying to show me his big tall buildings and then like a Mission Impossible vibe, like um, um, action movies, like he liked like the action. Um, he had to be on, he'd be up, he'd be ready, go, 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 kind of a thing. And he's showing me almost like his days and nights were mixed up. Like he'd rather sleep during the day and be awake at night or he had to do that for filming or movie. Like be up during the day or be up at night and awake during the day. He's like showing me like how babies have their days and nights mixed up. Like he felt like that. And he said, sometimes I felt really dark. And he's showing me Mac Miller, actually. He's making a, a, a reference, Heath Ledger is, to Mac Miller. And I don't know if that's because he relates. Yeah, there's a mental health thing. And he's showing me that there's definitely addiction and there's a balancing of um, getting better. Like I'm getting better. And then all of a sudden I, I go down, like I'm worse. And he's showing me pushing people away. Like, I don't want anybody near me. I'm like, I'm sick. I don't want anybody near me. I don't anybody near me. He's making me feel like he was actually sick, like um, a cold or a flu or something like that kind of a thing. And so, and he didn't feel like he could, he wasn't just, wasn't getting better. Um, he showed me a lot of things like people reaching out to him, but him pushing people away. I can see one of the twins. I don't know which name it is. I know what she looks like. She's really skinny. It's super, super thin. Let's say that. That one. I don't know which one it is, but her. And he says, I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I hurt you. And he's saying something about his mom. I don't see a dad. I'm saying something about his mom. And he's saying something about I didn't want to be a failure. 
I didn't want to be a failure. He's referring to, he's talking to his mom and he's like saying, I didn't want to be a failure. And so he says, I don't want to be a failure. He says, you know, Hollywood isn't, I mean, it's not that he expected to be fair. I mean, you know, it's, it's a, it's, it's like gambling, you know. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose and it's big time. It's big, you know. He's showing me Las Vegas. I don't know if he actually showed me Las Vegas for some reason. He, because I said gambling, is that why you're showing me Las Vegas? Or is it a gamble? Shooting a film in Las Vegas? Something about Las Vegas, that means something. If you're a Heath Ledger fan, can you tell me what the Las Vegas connection is? Like, is it a film that he had there? Is it a movie that was filmed there? Or is that a place he liked to go? Or is, did he live by it there? Or in like in Nevada someplace? What, just put it in the bank. Put it in the comments below. Okay, so you were in the Batman movie. I know that. I didn't see it though. He says it came out after I died. Oh my gosh, guys, I totally forgot about that. I think it did. Did it? Is that true? Is that really true? I think that might be true. That it came out after I said came out after I died. He said I was more famous when I when I, after I died than I was when I was alive. He said, now that's sad. Now that's a sad commentary on social culture. He's talking to me about Europe too. He mentioned something European, like it's European or different. Like he's specifically saying United States. But I see like the Netherlands, Holland, maybe Sweden, Denmark. I see Denmark, Netherlands, Holland. I don't know if that means anything, you guys. To him, for him. Unless a director was from there or a producer from there or he liked to go there. I don't think it's that. There's some kind of connection. Maybe a film festival. I don't know. It's not that. I don't know. It's connected to the movie thing, I think. He's showing me I had a shot in a TV show, or I had a cameo, or a short. I had a short role or an appearance in a TV show that you would recognize. He said to me, "It's not a comedy though. It's like a. It could be a TV drama. It could be something simple like a CSI or something like that." Where he just kind of was one of the guys that walked in and said some stuff and left. He makes me feel like bad guys. Like he liked to play really dark, kind of intense characters. And he said because he could relate to the the way they felt, like the depth of their. He says I don't want to say brooding or foreboding, but the depth of the the they used that darkness to really make themselves powerful and they weren't swallowed up by by it they were they were they thrived in it and I you might I'm maybe I admired that because of dealing with the darkness for myself and when you say darkness are you talking about addiction or are you talking about like depression he says depression mental health mental health he says um he's showing me like really high energy too like speed or something like cocaine like really high energy and then it's almost like a bipolar, but he did. I don't think he had that. It doesn't feel like that at all. It feels like the high is like trying to get me. He says, you know, I was on medication. I actually went to a shrink. He said, didn't work out so well though because um, it kind of pissed me off. He says, it's like, um, and and if I'm, he says, if I'm being on, he's smoking. Did he smoke? Because he's smoking because I can see him with a cigarette. And he's kind of talking to me. God, you know what he reminds me of? Um, Sean, who's the guy that was married to Madonna? Sean Penn. He kind of has that vibe a little bit. The Sean Penn kind of on the bad boy kind of vibe, kind of a little bit of that. He's kind of, if I had to describe Heath Ledger, like I can't even think about what he looks like. I think he has light hair, like blonde hair. He, um, I didn't look anything up before I started this, so I'm going to have to look up after because I need to know what he looks like. Now my brain's like, is he, do he have dark hair, kind of brownish blonde hair? I can't tell. It kind of reminds me of a Brad Pitt, Sean Penn combination is how he feels. That's a vibe of his energy. So it could be sexy and kind of cute, but rugged and like badass and I don't care. Badass and I don't care. Um, kind of vibe. And he said, if I'm being honest, he says, I don't know that I wanted to be well. I didn't know if I would change my, my career. You know, would it make me not good anymore? Or would I, 
what I'm best at, you know, like would it change my craft? He really feels like a character, a method actor, you guys. Really, like he took acting really seriously. He said it was e it, it was easy to do that when it was a a role that wasn't like um, wasn't like something that other people wanted to be known for or wanted to play. I, the kind of more the obscure roles, you guys. He would be drawn more to that than uh, like. Then, like the Dylan on 90210, he wouldn't play that part. That wouldn't be what he played. He says, maybe if I was desperate for a role, <laughs> maybe if I had to be on Netflix, he says, maybe I would then, you know. But uh, no, no, I, I much prefer, he says, I much prefer the movies. That's, I prefer that. And he likes the stuntman stuff. So I don't know if he started off as a stuntman and then moved into the movies or what. But I feel a connection to like desert, like in California. But then I feel like this almost like business mentality of New York and New York City. And um, there's a little bit of a contrast with those two energies for him. Um, so make with that what you will. But All right, you guys, this is Bridget. It's been my pleasure to be able to channel for you and to connect with Heath Ledger in the afterlife. Remember, the purpose here is always to inspire your spirit, to give you some kind of inspiration here to fill you with some hope energy, to be positive and productive in your daily life. This is your life now, this is your life, so make sure you are doing your best to live it. Just live it. Now, as I'm outing, getting to the end here and wrapping this up, I'm realizing that we didn't even talk about his death or what caused his death. And I'm sure that if you're looking up channelers and psychic mediums, that's something you wanna know because you like to know, how did they die? And I want to, Take this opportunity to reflect and to reflect into the purpose of Above Life Channel is to inspire your spirit and to focus on your life. The most important part of life is to live it, to actually live it. And our death moment is one scene in the entire moment. One scene. So it doesn't really necessarily matter how he died, but I can tell you it definitely feels like he takes ownership for his death. He wanted to go, he says. I wanted to leave. I wanted it to be over. Over and done, he says. Over and done. So if I had to say, I would say it was a suicide, but it may have been a suicide by medication or overdose. But it feels like that. So for those of you that have to know that, that's all it feels to me. So you can put in the comments below, especially if you're a Heath Ledger fan, what you know about him and his life, how he has inspired you as a person to live the best life that you can live. This is Bridget. Thank you so much for watching.